Hello, my name is Matt, and today I'll be presenting my poster on uh, the insights into the design of KEEP1 inhibitors from machine learning and molecular dynamics. So to start, our lab is interested in understanding the KEEP1 NRF2 protein-protein interaction. This protein-protein uh, interaction is significant in that the dysregulation of it is very uh, relevant in many diseases and disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and many inflammatory diseases. Um, the NRF2 protein binds to keep one at two different motifs, a low affinity DLG motif, as well as a high affinity DXETG motif. Our lab is interested in the high affinity DXETG motif and inhibiting this protein-protein interaction using macrocyclic peptide inhibitors. So the protein-protein interaction is shown here for this DXETG motif. We can see the NRF2 wild type sequence shown in gray here, as well as the binding site of KEEP1 shown in wheat. In B, we can see um, some of our previously de designed macrocyclic peptide inhibitors. And as you can see, there's a very uh, good overlay of all these or a very low RMSD value for most of these residues comparatively until you get to this 76 region. And this is our linker region. Our linker is very important in the macrocyclic design of our uh, inhibitors because this helps to pre-organize uh, the R groups of our uh, surrounding residues into a certain conformation that's uh, fit for the actual binding to keep one. So more specifically, I'm hoping to incorporate two different approaches into uh, understanding this protein-protein interaction better and how to better tailor macrocyclic peptide inhibitors for keep one. Those two methods are machine learning and molecular dynamics. Um, if you're unfamiliar with machine learning, machine learning is just a powerful tool for understanding hidden features in a data set that are not always visible at the surface level. We're interested in using PLSR or partial least square regression and uh, VIP, variable importance and projection. Uh, PLSR takes a X data set of numbers and you'll uh, input a Y variable, um, something that you're looking to understand the, the variance in. So in this case, I'm looking to understand the variance in binding affinity, and I'll be using uh, a set of X variables to help understand that. For molecular dynamics, I'm using a uh, recently published program called Dynadoc, or more specifically, Class Tor. And this program allows us to understand um, the frames and their classification from a molecular dynamic simulation of our macrocycles. Uh, the previous results that really propelled us into this was done by a previous graduate student doing hydrogen deuterium uh, exchange mass spectrometry. She saw that for a certain mutant, such as shown in B here, compared to the wild type shown in A, there was a difference in the ARDD percent. And for example, this mutation all the way up here was causing a difference all the way down here. Um, so comparatively between the wild type, there was a large difference. So the mutation was causing some sort of uh, allosteric regulation in a way between residues that were much farther away from the actual binding site of where the NRF2 uh, DXETG motif binds to keep one. Also, previously, we have done uh, molecular dynamics, uh, looking more at the actual strain on residues from using different linkers shown in C and D here. So in my study, I'm hoping to bring two different approaches for the machine learning study. Uh, I'm using seven of our lab's 22 previously published PDB structures of keep one bound to different macrocyclic peptide inhibitors. I'm using seven because if you're familiar with machine learning, usually your data output is very large. So seven was a good kind of pilot study for me to start with. Um, also, these seven PDB structures gave a wide enough landscape of binding affinities, which would uh, be inputted into my PLSR model. Um, the 13 uh, residues that I'm using are shared among all seven of these PDB structures in the binding site. Um, altogether, there's also 11 descriptors. Uh, these 11 descriptors were calculated using a, the VADAR website. Um, these 11 descriptors pertain to volume, shape, surface area, and angles of the KEEP1 protein residues in the binding site. Uh, I was also able to obtain three extra uh, descriptors relating to B factors that I incorporated. So altogether, there's 182 total descriptors in my study. Uh, for the mole molecular dynamic study design, uh, I'm using four linkers um, that are listed here, as well as an additional NRF2 variant, this E78P variant. Um, I'm using 30,000 frames total. And I'm within the Dynadoc uh, class tour program, uh, the program itself will bin all the frames and determine the highest frequency, um, the highest frequency torsional angles within all of those frames. So I'll take the integer numbers of the angles uh, in the simulation for each frame and then bin them accordingly based on uh, the highest frequency values. Um, it will then take a range and then from there it's able to classify these torsional angles. 
into different classes and they'll be able to relate the fractional percent of all the frames into each one of those classes. So for my machine learning results, uh, as you can see here in A, my model is actually very nice in that within the first three PLS components, I was able to obtain around 100%, which was great. For B, my VIP descript, uh, my VIP scores for each descriptor are shown. So VIP uh, determines the most influential uh, descriptors for determining binding affinity in this case. So as we can see here, we have this serine uh, 555. Um, this residue was actually very uh, interesting in that when I was doing the a simple comparison analysis at first, I noticed that within my seven complexes, I have two uh, low affinity micromolar binders compared to the other five complexes, which are around mid to low nanomolar ranges. And I noticed that uh, for the chi angle for this serine 555, the low uh, affinity binders, the two micromolar binders were actually very different from the rest of the other five uh, PDB structures. So I saw that these micromolar binders were at negative uh, 170 and negative 80, whereas the other five residues that were low to mid nanomolar were actually around 54 degrees. This is more typical of chi angles. Chi angles usually are around 60, 180 or negative 60. Um, so this was something that I, I saw originally when I was doing the comparative analysis that kind of interested me. Um, also, recently, this year, actually, another study was published where um, a group was looking at the addition of a fluorine in a small molecule inhibitor for binding to keep one. They found that this one small fluorine addition was able to actually increase the binding affinity by 400 times by actually creating a uh, intermolecular bond with glutamine 530. By doing this, they actually abolished a serine 555 uh, intramolecular bond between this glutamine 530 and serine 555. And this is something to note, especially when doing future macrocyclic peptide design studies. Uh, the next part of this study was using molecular dynamics, uh, specifically using ClassTOR. Um, so ClassTOR takes all the frames from a molecular dynamics simulation, and it will uh, basically categorize or classify those frames based on the bins that are obtained uh, from the actual uh, uh, the actual classification scheme. So we can see here, for example, in uh, the in A, we have many of these uh, bonds, which are represented by these letters here, these torsional backbone angle bonds that are very Gaussian. There's just one single peak, but there's a couple such as A here that have two peaks or two bins, as they would call it. And these bins are represented by these zeros and ones in the classifier. So for the most part, you can see most things are zero, which is just the highest peak, or in this case, the one Gaussian peak. But a couple such as E and A have multiple peaks or multiple bins, and these help dictate the different poses um, that these uh, that these uh, frames can be in. So as we can see here, we get the fractional percent of all the frames of the 30,000 U's that are within this pose versus another pose. So this is very important in understanding uh, the different poses that are composed of your macro cycle using these different linkers. So for example, here, a DHA linker, we can see many different poses that exist. So in conclusion, from the uh, machine learning results, it appears that serine 555 sidechain is critical in obtaining a high affinity interaction. Uh, this is something to consider for future design studies. Um, for the cluster results, in terms of flexibility, uh, one of the biggest discoveries was that the DHA linkers uh, Psi uh, E79 becomes threefold more flexible than in the cyclic wild type. Also, the uh, DHA linkers Phi G81 and Psi G81 flexibility is restored compared to the cyclic wild type. In terms of the classification results, our lead candidate inhibitor, the DHA linker, is only about a third of all favorable conformations fit in the bound conformation class. And classes two to five of the DHA linker contain more than 50% of all conformations, which was one of the most critical findings from this study. In the future, we hope to expand the machine learning analysis on all residues in the complex, as well as further uh, further uh, keep one bound uh, macrocyclic peptide inhibitor complexes. Uh, we also hope to uh, further the molecular dynamic studies by incorporating the same approach, just using different linkers to understand the effects of uh, different linkers on uh, different poses and confirmations that these macrocyclic peptide inhibitors can have. Thank you.